Welcome to the Pharmacist Diaries podcast, Alison. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Um, I would like to kickstart the episode with my favourite question of why you wanted to become a pharmacist in the first place. Well, um, I remember back then, back in A-levels, when I had to pick like what I want to do. I actually didn't know what I want to do, but I do know like I want to do something science related, healthcare related, because I've been studying science my whole life. And it was actually my chemistry teacher in A-levels that really pushed for me to do pharmacy. And I did look into the course and yeah, I was like, I do like to know how medications work and how to actually take them. And um, here I am today at King's. And I want to say that I didn't regret it and I really like pharmacy. That's amazing. Let's take you back to the start of um, university. What was it like transitioning from a school environment to a university environment? I think it was challenging, 100%, very daunting as well, because for me, it's a whole new environment, especially coming from Malaysia to the UK, being an international student. It was just so different. The culture was different. I actually found it very difficult to fit in as, at first because of the culture shock. But um, it was good. I slowly adapted in and really putting myself out there, making new friends and like joining societies, which is such a great way to make friends. But um, I really like the pharmacy in the UK because the prospects is so good. And when I started studying, I actually didn't know what pharmacy is actually like. So even community pharmacy here is so different from back home. And when I went on placement, it was we get a taste of like community pharmacy, hospital pharmacy. And I just found that very interesting because the work that community pharmacy do they do so much more like consultation um, rather than just like dispensing medication and just checking all day from what we know from the outside. But actually patients do come in and like ask for advice. And I think it's the little things like this really make me like pharmacy. And even hospital pharmacy, I found the clinical part of it really, really interesting. So that was really nice. Um, As I progressed throughout the degree, I just fell in love more and more with pharmacy and um, I think King's is very good as in from day one they just send us out to placement give us as much exposure as possible which is amazing and in my third year we did like summer placements as well I applied for summer placements and I got like exposures to hospital pharmacy so I actually did mine in Guy's and St Thomas's as well as East London Foundation Trust which is a mental health trust and that's when I gained exposure to um, the mental health sector, which I found very interesting because it's all very new to me. Um, and also like in Guys and St. Thomas's, I was placed in like the respiratory clinic with the respiratory pharmacist. And respiratory wasn't something I really thought of. And yeah, I worked on like an audit on like inhalers and I did find all of those very interesting and it was good. What's um, pharmacy like in Malaysia in general once you become a pharmacist? Uh, Like you said, the community pharmacy is quite different. Mm -hmm. Uh, What can you do in a community pharmacy in Malaysia? So it's very business-like and very sales-based. So there's not much regulation, I would say, not as tight as the UK, 100%. You can literally buy like um, prescribed medications over the counter You can just walk into the pharmacy and be like, okay, you want a pregabalin and then you just get a pregabalin. So it's very different in community there. And in hospital there, especially private hospitals, it's more like community pharmacy here. So it's more on like you get a prescription, you dispense, you check. And it's not really, you don't, you're not really on the wards. So yeah, it's very different in terms of that sense. And um is it all kind of uh, private health care or there is kind of government health care like NHS? There is government health care. So it's quite split. It's like a 50-50 split between like government and private health care. I'm not too sure on how government health care is like because I've never done a placement there and I've never seen like what hospital pharmacy is like there. But I have done like a 
placement in a private hospital over back in Malaysia. And yeah, I just find that it was quite a waste that we have so much skill set as a pharmacist that we're not using back home. I think a lot of countries find that this is quite common practice. Um, I spent a lot of time with Filipinos when I worked in Abu Dhabi, and a lot of them had come over to um, Abu Dhabi and to work or Dubai to work um, as pharmacists, or they wouldn't necessarily be able to start as a pharmacist. They'd have to work as a technician until they could get licensed. But even then, they'd have um, a lot of responsibility. Um, the services that are provided are very different to kind of their home life. Um, and working in a community pharmacy when I was in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, I mean, you can buy anything over the counter, including insulin. And it's quite scary. And it was very, it's shocking. I mean, I've been to India as well and gone into pharmacies um, and you can you can buy anything. And when my grandma was on a holiday, she was like buying antibiotics. I'm like, oh my goodness, like how is this happening? Um, and they don't label, they literally write, you know, like three lines on a box so people know it's three times a day. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, so you don't even have labels. It's um, crazy, which, isn't it? Which is so different. And um, so it's really interesting to see kind of what pharmacists are doing in other countries, but it makes us very grateful um, for the fact that we can um, provide so much more here. Like we've got, you know, the ability to to really step up what we're doing and the course that Kings provides. I mean, I love it. And um, you go on placement, like you said, from first year, your exposure every year, you get something in terms of uh, seeing what pharmacists do in, in a day-to-day job and in different environments as well, which is great. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I really like the fact that you're able to specialize in the UK as well. So you're able to like run your own clinics, which... I think in a lot of countries that that doesn't really happen. So yeah, it- yeah. I mean, it's it's um uh, the US is definitely kind of just as far as as we are in terms of the ability as to what pharmacists can do and the variety of roles. They don't have as as many kind of rights in terms of prescribing like the UK, but they will definitely get to that point. Um, but there are so many other countries where you know, you've got what they have as like an inpatient versus outpatient pharmacist role. Um, And to do kind of pharmacotherapy or a ward-based job, you know, you get one or two of those pharmacists in the whole hospital. Yeah. (laughs) You know, which is just so odd compared to... It is, it is, yeah. um, Which is, yeah, funny. Um, In terms of, I guess, university what were your interests as a student um, when you started doing all the different modules? Um, I actually like everything and it was really hard for me because I just couldn't pick, I couldn't figure out what exactly I'm most interested in. And I think throughout my whole university, I was just trying to figure out, okay, what, I'm, what am I going to do after university? Should I do hospital? Should I do community? Should I do industry? And I just found, like I like, the formulation-based module, we get like a formulation-based module every year, which was very interesting. And I do very well on those modules as well. But at the same time, um, Kings do modules by body systems. So we have like the nervous systems, cardiovascular. And I think my favorite one was the cardiovascular system. I really like cardiology. Um, And I always thought like, okay, I'm going to specialize in cardiology next time. I'm going to be a cardiovascular pharmacist. Um, But going on from there, in second year, we have like, I still remember we had to make like creams, tablets. I was really excited in making tablets. Um, In our third year, we have like a mini project. So that really gave us the opportunity to see what it's like working in the lab. And I think that really opened up new doors for me. And I was like, actually, maybe I want to work in industry because I think the job prospects are amazing. You have so many opportunities in industry. If you don't like one department, you can always go to another department. And it made sense for me as well because I thought 
of going home at some point in the future. So it made sense for me to transfer back home in industry, whereas in hospital, like I mentioned, it's great over here, but it's not as great back home. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's completely understandable, especially um, as an international student. You've still got your your traditional home life to kind of think about. So industry does make it a little bit easier. When you say you liked um, the formulation modules and those were where you got your kind of best marks, what was it that you were good at specifically? Was it the write-ups of the reports or the kind of group work that you had to do in the labs or what, what were you good at? I think it was, yeah, it was the write-up and the exams, really. I just found it really easy to understand. Like, I think one that really stuck with me was when I first learned about surfactants. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, that's how soap works. Because, you know, when your hands are oily and you need soap, and that's how it works. So, yeah, I just found it like, oh, everything just clicks and it makes sense. And yeah, but not every not everyone finds it interesting. I know a lot of people who don't like the formulation modules, but I think it's very good to fit one in every year just so that like people know that there is always an alternative and pharmacy is not only community and hospital pharmacy. Yeah, and of course, from a university perspective, it's really good. The clinical content, obviously, you feel like that covers a lot of the course. But if you don't understand... Um, you know, formulation development and clinical trials and how, you know, a drug actually gets to market. You haven't really studied the whole like life cycle of a medication. So it's really important to kind of understand all of that during the undergraduate course. And it does open your eyes to different interests. Um, It gives you a little bit of a taste of what a pharmacy role could be like and where your skills would fit in. So you said that you were really scientific, so I assume that all that kind of logic and things making sense, um, and it's very factual in terms of like formulating a product and everything has to be, you know, very particular. And maybe that kind of fits your personality and kind of like your skills, which is really interesting. It is really hard when you love everything because I was quite similar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I. I was good at the clinical. I loved it. I found it interesting. I I liked utilizing my knowledge um, in a face-to-face, you know, patient environment, like in the community pharmacy. Um, But then also, obviously, in my hospital kind of pre-reg year, I was counseling all the time. And I knew that was something I loved. Um, But for my fourth year, um, one of the modules you get to choose And I went for the industry module because I was like, oh, well, you know, we've had some of it during university, but it's been very clinical focused. And I'm really, really interested to see how I do in an industry module where does my skill set actually fit there? You know, am I really interested in it? Would I be passionate enough to kind of go into that role? Um, And I did really, really enjoy it. So it's it's very difficult to kind of make those decisions. Um, Yeah. So what was your fourth year project like? What did you get to do for that? So my fourth year project was very interesting. I picked a clinical project. Actually, I didn't pick a lab-based project because of COVID. And I thought it will be difficult to do it remotely. And I didn't know we got to go go back to the labs. Like the instructions weren't clear back then because no one knows what's going to happen. So I ended up picking a clinical project. And I, and I remember at the start, I kind of regretted it a little bit because data collection was on the boring side. And like my other friends were doing like very fun lab works. They were in the lab all day and I was so jealous. But um, no, I was very lucky, actually. I actually got to work on a project on heart failure. And like I like cardiology, I mentioned before, so I was very happy about my project. I um, actually, we were collecting data on the initiation of dapagliflozine on heart failure patient. So like it was previously licensed as an anti-diabetic medication, but now obviously it's licensed for heart failure. So they want to see like how it works in the real world and if the results are the same as the clinical trials. So I actually got to work with like a heart failure pharmacist at Guys and St. Thomas's Hospital. So, I mean, for the most part, I was collecting data and that was nothing interesting. But it was after the data collection when I was analyzing the data. That was very interesting because that's when you generate the report and see your results and what you've done. 
that um, it it was very meaningful in a sense where like you can see, oh, this medication actually works and it is like reducing hospitalization and reducing death. And overall, it was a great project. And my supervisor was great, actually. She encouraged me to submit my abstract to the European Society of Cardiology Heart Failure Congress in Madrid. And it, we, were, we were very lucky that the abstract got accepted. And both of us actually went to Madrid to have our po- uh, abstract as a poster presentation over there. And actually, after that, um, it was very exciting because we continue working on the project because my supervisor and the consultant working on it, they think it's worth to be published. And so we continue doing, we added more statistical analysis. It was hard work, actually. I was working past um, the deadline of the project and, and I was doing like both lectures and the project at the same time. So it was actually taking up a lot of my time. But I think it was very worth it in the end because it got accepted for publication um, and it will be in the next I- issue of the British Journal of Cardiology. Which is so exciting. I, I love that. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is so exciting for a student to A, go to Madrid with your supervisor and then B, work extra hard after the project's finished and get published. Go you, Alison. I'm so proud. Thank you. Um, That's really, really amazing. I'm really happy for you. And it gives you a real taste of kind of some of the rewards that relate to pharmacy jobs, especially those in the hospital environment, but also in the academic environment where you are working um, on these types of projects with students. Um, it must have been lovely for your supervisor to see you kind of grow and develop as well in your last year of um, university. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about when you got to the point of applying for your trainee pharmacist year. What were your thoughts when you had to start your applications? Um, definitely stressful when I was trying to apply for um, trainee pharmacist jobs because we right now we go through the oral route if you want to do like hospital pharmacy or community pharmacy but on the side um, I decided to do external applications as well so I think the three pharmaceutical companies that were offering trainee pharmacist positions were Pfizer, AstraZeneca and GSK and I did apply to all three but um, I actually I actually withdrew application for one of them because they weren't sponsoring visas. Like that's another challenge um, for international students as well that we need visa sponsoring. Um, but then I realized all three of them don't sponsor anyway. So I decided to proceed with my application. And lucky enough, I got interviews from all of them. Um, the, but for me, like I was quite lucky that I was able to apply to any of them because this year onwards, we were able to get the graduate route visa and just pay for the visa ourselves instead of having a sponsor. So I did that. I was lucky enough to get an interview for both of them and I accepted the job with Pfizer. But um, after getting the job, I still did Aurel. Like I went through Aurel. I went through like ranking my places because I was like, I do like hospital pharmacy as well. And I was a bit torn between the both. Like, as you said, like you like using your clinical knowledge. And I do love that part of pharmacy. And it's just that when you go into industry, you don't really use your clinical knowledge anymore. And it is a shame because that was what I studied throughout my degree. I did Aurel. Um, it was all right. I did got my first choice. I got into UCL hospital and I ended up rejecting it. Because, um, like I mentioned before, I feel like in the future, if I do want to go into industry and that's my end goal, it's just it just makes more sense for me to do my pre-reg in industry. Yeah, no, I completely understand and absolutely amazing that you got interviews um, and awarded a place. What do you think helped you to get that interview in the first place? What was... What was it about your application that you believe they saw something exciting in Hallison? (laughs) Um, I think it's really building up my CV from the start. So I didn't start in first year, but I started in second year where I worked part-time in a community pharmacy. 
So I was just trying to gain experience, earn a little bit of pocket money, and also just gain exposure to what it's like being in a community pharmacy. Because when you go for placement, you're not actually working. You're just like getting a taste of what it's like there. But when you're working part-time, you're actually an employee there and you actually have to do actual work. So I just want to see what the day-to-day is like. So I end up getting a job there, which I think is very beneficial. And probably most pharmacy students should do that because it not only helps build your CV, gain exposure, and also um, the day-to-day job, like responding to minor ailments, consulting patients. You need that for your OSCEs anyway. And dealing with customers on a day-to-day basis just builds your confidence for that. And you're just going to score well in OSCE without even trying. So yeah, no, I, I love that. And that was me as well. And I, yeah, and I exactly. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And so in my third year, I applied for summer placements. And I think that's very useful. I, I think it's more useful back then when there's no Aurel, when you actually have to fight for a place um, applying for pre-reg. But with Aurel, obviously, they make everyone the same and your experience don't matter. But I think it matters after that, after your pre-reg year, when you actually apply for a job. So I think it's good to still apply for summer placements in hospital, get a taste of what it's like. So I specifically chose a mental health trust, like I mentioned before, because I wanted to see what it's like in mental health. And because it's so specialized and it's so niche that we don't really gain exposure and it's very different from an acute trust as well. So I did one in the mental health trust and I did one in the hospital, which is so different. And I'm so glad I did both. Although it kind of take away my summer a little bit, but I'm still glad I did both. Um, Other than that, I work part-time actually. I was quite lucky to get a part-time job at St. Thomas's Hospital. So I was just working in the dispensary during COVID because they needed people. They needed more help because of like the NHS was so under so much pressure. And Kings have affiliations with St. Thomas's Hospital and they literally just asked like, does anyone want to work? So I took on that opportunity. I was lucky enough to be placed in the dispensary, was dispensing medication, which helped as well because you're exposed to so many new medications. You see them on a day-to-day basis. So it helps with my studies as well. Um, And then after that, I did join the COVID vaccination team as well. So that was a very exciting hopefully once in a lifetime opportunity. They were doing like mass vaccination at the St. Thomas's hospital site. So we were, we were trained to be vaccinators. So that was quite interesting because we've never had that in university. We don't know, don't even know how to do a flu jab. So that was exciting for me. And I think it's just the transferable skills that I've gained all together from all these part-time work placements, because you do learn a lot from doing um, extra work outside of university. And I think it's all of it, all of these that they really see um, the value in all these transferable skills, even though I've never had any industry experience. Yeah, no, 100%. You've literally listed so many things, A, to add to your CV, but lots of things to talk about as well Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when it comes to getting an interview, um, when, when you're asked questions you then have the ability and the opportunity to give lots of examples of where you've maybe put that skill or um, problem solving or communication into practice. It's not just about what you've been doing at university, but what you've been doing outside of that that fits in with pharmacy, which is really, really valuable. And you did a lot. There was a lot of opportunity there. No, but it's great. Um, I think that's amazing because you made the most of your time. Um, and also, maybe you were motivated because you're an international student and you know that actually I'm here, you know, internationally, I've not lived in the UK before, I want to make the most of every opportunity that I've got while I'm still living here as well. Um, so, you know, go you for, for doing all of that. Yeah, and like working in COVID as well, like that that was definitely quite brave as well in quite a challenging situation and what could be feel quite scary as a student to come into a hospital environment where you could potentially you know catch it um and then getting experience with the vaccination hub that's that's great um so i'm sure that the 
team uh, reviewing applications saw that you were enthusiastic. They must have seen that you would have had a lot of transferable skills that could be utilized in a industry kind of pre-reg or training pharmacist um, role. Um, so I'm sure that's one of the main reasons why um, you were you were picked um, or shortlisted. What was the interview like for you? The interview was scary, definitely. It was quite a long interview. Um, so we did like the CV cover letter part, got to the interview. Um, it was a bunch of, it's a mixture of like evidence, uh, not evidence-based, like behavioral-based um, questions. So they'll give you a scenario and then they want to know how you would act. And they also want you to give examples of like when you work in a team or have you ever like gone out of your way to help someone else? They want you to de- demonstrate like their company values as well. And after that, I had like um, a calculation question and a bunch of like formulation questions because um, we will be going in as a formulation scientist. So I did study, like I went back to my second year notes and actually study, restudy all the questions, <laughs> restudy all the formulation content. Yeah, and that really helped. And I think because I've worked so much, I sat down, went through my experience and actually like prep for the questions. Um, you want to prep like the common questions such as teamwork, when you show like, um, like I mentioned just now, like when you went out of your way to help someone else or even like common scenarios when you have a conflict with a colleague, how you would deal with it. And I went through all my experiences and yeah, I came up with examples and it worked. It's a great idea and I do that even to this day with multiple years of experience. If I'm going into an interview, um, I don't type things up actually for interview prep. It's all very kind of written in a diary. Um, But I look at kind of questions that could potentially come up um, and then try to answer them in my head or on paper and kind of give a you know, my best model answer of what I would kind of raise and what examples I would give. I also have, um, I get a copy of the person specification and I get my highlighters out and kind of look at every skill that they expect you to have, because obviously the questions are going to relate to those skills. So I look at, you know, leadership or problem solving or communication, whatever it is, and then look for examples in, you know, the last few jobs I've had and things outside of the job. So the podcast, for example, is a great opportunity now um, when I go for interviews. Um, I, I'm not going for interviews just in case my employer is listening. Um, uh, but if I was to go to an interview, then I would kind of utilize the podcast, for example, as something outside of my um, day-to-day work life, but it's giving me a lot of skill in terms of communication or confidence in front of a camera, Um, so much organization, my time management, um, creativity goes into this podcast, Um, business and kind of project management with other people. Um, So I can utilize that kind of it's relevant to utilize that information um in an interview so yeah they're happy happy like that you've been working um yeah, really hard yeah. like that, your notes, that's amazing like that's a great idea and, yeah. and it's, it's relevant sometimes because you don't want to be that person who really doesn't prep for the interview and then all those questions come up and you live in regret like I wish I had just you know done a little know, bit of work yeah would have been so much better because as a fourth year student looking for a trainee pharmacist role um those opportunities don't come back you know that's mm-hmm. that's your one chance to kind of go out there and, and and get what you want um so good for you yeah. so tell us uh what has your trainee pharmacist role been like um and uh where did you start So I started in community and I am still in my community part of the placement and my industry part of the placement will be starting end of January. So um, it's been great, honestly, like I've enjoyed it so much. My community placement is in Kent. So I've moved out of London into Kent and it is a huge change. Obviously, I've moved from the probably the biggest city in the country to like a small town in Kent. 
it's very different, um, but people are very, very nice. The staff are very nice. The team is nice. My supervisor is great as well. I've learned a lot in community. I think that's the one thing where I was very worried that I am at a disadvantage going into the pre-reg exam because obviously I'm only doing six months clinical patient-facing role and then six months, which is not clinical. Um, plus like these six months, a lot of people tell me that in community, you don't learn as much clinical knowledge as compared to hospital, which I want to say like part of it is true, part of it is not. Like you still learn the clinical side of things in community if you want to learn. Like you can find ways to learn every single day. So not every day I go in and I'm like, oh, I learn a lot. But um, I do try to find ways to learn every single day. So even when like dispensing, labeling or checking, um, because that's the main thing I do. But even when I'm doing those, every time I come across a medication that I don't know or I don't know the dose of, I will look it up in the BNF and then I'll try to remember what's the initial starting dose, what's the max dose, is it safe for the patient? So I try to like clinically check at the same time just to get myself used to the medications and the doses and whether it's safe or not. And even like I'm doing, I'm helping my pharmacists with the new medicine services. So I call patients who are on, who started on the new medication and just to see how they're getting on, how, if they're experiencing any side effects. And I think those calls are very valuable for the patient as well and very valuable to me because I'm learning a lot. And um, from there, like you learn the side effects, like what are the common side effects of the medication and how to deal with them? Is it urgent? Like, does the patient need immediate medical attention? Should they go to their GP or should they go to A&E straight away? So I think that's where you learn how to manage um, what's urgent and what's not as well. And on a day to day, like I have many patients coming in asking for advice. They want to see the pharmacist. They want to ask for advice. And so I suggested to my pharmacist that I want to be the first person to see the patient first before she sees them so that I can get to know like, okay, what are the common queries and how to deal with the common queries? And I would go back to my pharmacist after that and be like, okay, I think it's this, this is this and what we should do. And if she agrees, then she'll just tell me to let the patient know. If not, then I'll just bring her in to help. Um, consult the patient so yeah I think I am learning a lot every single day which I love and just growing honestly and becoming a better pharmacist I love that I love that I'll add a couple of bits I guess because um, I've worked in community pharmacy as a student so when I look back to the trainee pharmacist year you can gain a lot of evidence in the community pharmacy in a very um, kind of quick pace <clears throat> like when you're trying to get your standards signed off, it probably is a little bit easier than your hospital um, because a lot of it relates to community pharmacy um, when you're looking at emergency hormonal contraception, when you're looking at the legal aspect of um, prescribing as well. Obviously, you do that in hospital, but when you're looking at an FB10 type of prescription um, and dealing with the day-to-day -day types of prescriptions that come in from community, even how you log um, your CD records, it helps you to look at what could come up on the exam in terms of um, documenting control drugs um, records. And then I think these days as well, a lot of patients find it difficult to get appointments with GPs at a quick pace. So obviously they come into their high street pharmacy for advice. So you're probably getting a lot more complex um, patients with issues that are a little bit more challenging um, to deal with. But this then supports your ability to communicate. Um, you may then have to refer the patient and that understanding that referral process and kind of like your red flags are also really valuable skills for you to learn as a trainee pharmacist. And like you said, being behind that counter and all of the OTC medicines and similar to what you said about the OSCEs is it doesn't make it difficult to then do an OSCE because actually it's just natural. It's yeah. just a normal thing that you would do with a patient because you're doing it all the time. 
And it's the same, you're learning so much about over the counter medications, and you have all those questions in your mind, you know, if they're buying Sudafed, you know, you're, you're thinking, oh, okay, are they on any blood pressure medications? Are they allowed to take this? You know, um, am, am I allowed to sell this um, to this patient? patient and all those questions kind of come up so you're already thinking about contraindications because you're simply having to ask the patient those questions in the first place and when you do that on a very regular basis that knowledge just sticks with you so when you're studying for the exam actually I feel like it's a lot easier um, because it's something that you're doing every day um, so I'm glad that you've been enjoying it happy days that's great it and it's really good yeah. Um, you've got a good supervisor and that you're in an enjoyable um, environment. Are you excited, nervous? Um, yeah, how do you feel about transitioning over to uh, the industry side? I am excited, 100%, but very ner- nervous at the same time because I feel like community and hospital is what we know, all our degree. And industry is such a new area that we haven't touched and I don't know what it's like it's for the first time it's like I don't know what it's like going into the job but I am very excited I know it's going to be challenging transitioning into industry but I am very excited for that and I think I am ready it'll be amazing I'm sure of it and um, I wish you all the best Uh, is there any other uh, trainee pharmacists that will be joining you so you're not going to be alone Yes, so there's one more girl that's going to be joining me, which is very nice because both of us are doing our community part right now. And then we're going to industry together. So it's not like one at each place at a time. Yeah, so yeah, it'll be exciting. And are you moving house? Sorry? Are you moving house? For the, yes, your, uh, I am. Your I actually house. found a new place. Yeah, yeah. That's exciting. So that's also quite stressful to kind of move midway through your training <laughs> year when you've got yeah. so much going on. Um, but it will be worth it. And it'll be nice to be closer and not have to obviously travel um, far distances. Um, so, yeah, no, I wish you all the best. Um, I really look forward to hearing how that six month goes and kind of how your um, exam also goes. Um, have you got any thoughts? I guess it's quite difficult to say Um, what you'll be doing as a job uh, when you become a pharmacist. But in the new year, um, you'll have to start thinking about um, applications. Have you got any initial thoughts at this point? Um, Not really. I'm really struggling. But I think um, it's either I stay in industry if I really like it a lot, or I might go back to hospital because I do like the clinical side of things and I do like being a pharmacist. So I think hospital is always like a safe place for me that I want to as a job. Um, but the same time, I think the challenging thing is, again, looking for a sponsor to sponsor my visa. And that really limits my options as well. So, yeah, I haven't actually given much thought about it yet. No, you've still got a lot of time. Um, Let me ask you, actually, um, what you think. Do you think that you're at a disadvantage having done a community training pharmacist year versus a hospital in terms of getting a hospital job afterwards? Um, I think for a a lot of people, yes, probably, because I think hospital pharmacists do want, I mean, hospital pharmacy do want, um, do one like people who has done their pre reg in hospital. But um, I think for me, no, I'm not at a disadvantage because I have done so much of hospital placement during my degree. Like I've done two summer placement at a hospital and I've been dispensing at a hospital for a whole year. So I don't think I'm at a disadvantage and I'm sure I have gained enough transferable skills to be able to impress um, people at the hospital to actually hire me. So, yeah. I I completely agree. I was just checking uh, (laughs) what your thought processes are. Um, And also, it's quite a common question that comes up for community pre-regers, for trainee pharmacists who have spent an entire year in community. They are a little bit nervous to apply to hospital placements. In terms of 
competition, yes, of course, a hospital trainee pharmacist will have an advantage because they've spent the entire last 12 months in that environment. So they kind of also know what types of questions come up. Um, They know that there's usually a very clinical aspect to looking at a drug chart and answering questions. And for them, that aspect of the interview is very easy in comparison to a community um, trainee pharmacist sometimes because you're not used to looking at drug charts so you get a bit flustered um, so you're not as confident potentially with the answers you most likely will have the knowledge um, but it's just being put into a, a little bit of an uncomfortable situation but again this is something that you can practice um, prior to Um, doing an interview. Also, I'm sure you'll have lots of friends who are in hospitals, so they'll be aware of what types of questions come up because they'll be talking to older, you know, uh, pharmacists who've been through that experience recently. So, I mean, utilize the people around you, friends, friends of friends, in terms of gaining as much information because that will make it a little bit easier for you to prepare. Definitely. Um, But but people do worry um, about transitioning from one element of pharmacy to another. And I can confidently say that you're not at a disadvantage. Um, You might have to do a little bit more preparation, but you've got loads and loads of experience. And like you said, transferable skill, it goes a long way if you can sell yourself. Mm -hmm. And that takes a little bit of practice. um, And yeah, the groundwork for preparing for an interview. Um, I really appreciate the time that you've given me this evening and you have given loads and loads of really interesting um, pieces of information. And um, I'm sure that the younger generation of students and um, early years kind of pharmacists will be excited to hear what your journey's been like. Um, And uh, I look forward to hearing from you in the next six months and good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. 